Good morning and welcome to St Mark's Kensal Rise, our online service. I'd like to welcome you all this morning. If you're visiting, I'd like to welcome you and thank you for joining us this morning. Please feel free to use the comment section below. This morning we are continuing in our theme of rising strong, um, looking at the armour of God. And this week, Gillian is going to give us a talk on how our feet are fitted with the gospel of peace. So let's open up with prayer. Dear Lord, we thank you for this day. We thank you that you can join with us, that we can fellowship with one another in this way, Lord. We know that it's difficult at this moment, but we thank you for the provision to be able to come online and really worship you together this morning. I thank you for the word that you, Holy Spirit, has provided Gillian, and I pray, Lord, that it really speaks to our hearts this morning. We ask you to be with us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you. So please join with us now as we worship together and sing, Go Tell It on the Mountain. Still for the presence of the Lord 
The Holy One is here. Come bow before Him now with reverence and fear. In Him no sin is found. We stand on holy ground. Be still for the presence of the Lord. The Holy One is here. Be still for the glory of the Lord. Is shining all around. He burns with holy fire, with splendor he is crowned. How awesome is the sight! Is shining all around. Be still, for the power of the Lord is moving in this place. He comes to cleanse and heal. To minister to his grace. No work too hard for him. In faith receive from him. Be still for the power of the Lord is moving in. Never runs out on me Your love never 
Thank you for joining in that worship as we welcome the presence of the Lord. We've come to a time in the service now where we think about the things we may have said or done that is displeasing to the Lord. Father, we give you thanks and praise for the shed blood of our Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ, which has brought us near to you and allows us to approach your throne of grace with confidence so that we may receive mercy and grace in time of need. Please join with me as we say together, Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. May Almighty God, who forgives all who repent, have mercy upon us, pardon and deliver us from all our sins, confirm and strengthen us in all goodness, and keep us in life eternal. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Now, there's not many notices this morning. Um, just to let you know, we thank you for all those who attended the communion service this morning and next week we'll be able to give you an update and review how that is going and when the next one will be. Please join us for coffee at the end of the service as usual or if you would like prayer ministry, if you'd like private prayer, please join us on the Zoom details which you will see on the screen or you can go to the website to access those details directly after the service, those Zoom meetings will begin. So we're now entering a time where we share the peace of God with one another. So let the peace of Christ rule in our hearts, since as members of one body, we are called to peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you and also with me. <laughs> Here you have 30 seconds to share the peace of God with one another. Please do so in the comments. Thank you. It's so great to be able to share the peace of God that surpasses all understanding with one another. Gillian now will give us the scripture reading, which she's going to read from Isaiah chapter 52, verses 7 to 10. This will be followed by the prayers by Natalie, and then Gillian Unsworth Webb will give us her talk around peace. The reading today is from Isaiah 52, verses 7 to 10. How beautiful on the mountains are the feet of those who bring good news, who proclaim peace, who bring good tidings, who proclaim salvation, who say to Zion, your God reigns. Listen, your watchmen lift up your voices. Together they shout for joy. When the Lord returns to Zion, they will see it with their own eyes. Burst into songs of joy together, you ruins of Jerusalem. For the Lord has comforted his people. He has redeemed Jerusalem. The Lord will lay bare his holy arm in the sight of all the nations, and all the ends of the earth will see the salvation of our God. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Father, we thank you so much that you are good and you are holy and you are awesome. And Lord, I pray that you come and you fill us with your Holy Spirit today. I pray that you bless us, Lord Jesus, with a blanket of your peace. And Lord, we want to pray for the world. And we lift up Lebanon to you and the city of Beirut. 
And we thank you that you have a special heart for Beirut, Lord God. And I pray, Lord Jesus, for, a, for your peace that surpasses all understanding to come upon that city. I pray for the rescue operation. I pray for resources. I pray for good communication. And I pray for international support. In Jesus' name we ask. Amen. As we pray for our, our country, Lord, I pray as we're in the middle of COVID, Lord, I pray, Lord Jesus, that you bless our government, bless our leaders. And we pray, Lord Jesus, that we will not have a second wave. We pray for a good and safe vaccine to come quickly. Amen. Father, we pray for Kensal Rise and we pray for our community. We pray that we will be salt and light to our neighbours and that we will stand together, Lord. I pray for people that are suffering from mental illness, Lord, at, at this time. We pray for your peace and your comfort. Amen. Good morning. The title of today's talk is Feet Fitted with the Gospel of Peace. In our Rising Strong series, we're thinking what elements of God's armour we need to equip us for life's battlefield. In other words, what attributes or qualities that often have religious connotations when they're mentioned in the Bible can help us to live and share the love of Jesus Christ in our everyday lives. Think armour and you immediately consider breastplates and shields and helmets and all of these will put in an appearance in the weeks to come. Somehow feet don't have the same protective connotation. And similarly, when we hear the words, how beautiful on the mountains are the feet of those who bring good news, who proclaim peace. Beauty is the first adjective that pops into our mind to describe our appendages. Words like calloused or dry or cracked might be more apt. And if you are like me, your feet are probably less Beyonce and more BFG. Now, arguably, our feet, the poor things that hold us up all day and carry us around for miles, might look better if we lavished on them half the creams and potions that we rub on our faces for mere vanity. We rarely invest in looking after them. To put the feet of today's reading in context, God has become angry about the corruption the violence and the injustice in Judah, which is one of the kingdoms of the 12 tribes of Israel. As punishment, God has sent his people to be taken prisoner by the Assyrians and the Babylonians, their enemies. In this passage, however, God speaks to his people offering them salvation. He promises to rescue, bless and make them prosper if they forsake idols and they acknowledge him as the true God, the Lord above all things. So in our verses today, the phrase how beautiful are the feet, relates to the sight that the sentinels, the watch people, absorb as they keep vigil for danger approaching. They would have been so used to keeping this vigil for the encroachment of enemies that this exclamation 
relates to their delight at seeing a messenger, one who brings good news, who comes to proclaim peace. Peace is the real focus of our talk today. Maybe we consider peace to be less connected to our everyday lives and more related to the bigger world picture. Perhaps we associate it with conflict, such as at this time in Isaiah. But how as our father's children, does our peace through knowing God's love influence the way in which others see us and indeed how we live our lives? I wonder if perhaps using six everyday expressions that incorporate the word peace can help us explore and illustrate this. Firstly, the saying, to hold one's peace. There are so many situations where, as God's family, we're called upon to do this. How tempting it can be to join in with the chatter of friends who are busy talking about someone and to maybe make our own contribution to the gossip. We, however, try to live out Christ's teaching by taking a step back from this and resisting that temptation. Equally, it can take a lot of willpower just to absorb the opinionated rantings of another without responding angrily. Now I phone one of my relatives pretty regularly. They, they live alone and, and this has been a miserable time for them, as indeed it has been for many. Nevertheless, they have always been one to provide a strong view on any topic of conversation about which you care to converse. Now I try to ignore this, but sometimes unable to contain myself, I become frustrated and snappy. I found myself beginning to feel terrible about my reaction and I didn't really know what to do. So I took it to God in my prayers and I asked for his help. I'd asked him to come into the situation what happens at the moment is that I find myself more at peace during our calls and I appear to have been miraculously blessed with a strategy which allows me to hear but not to listen too closely even when the outpouring gets rather bigoted, thus enabling me to hold my peace. Consequently, my relationship with my family is preserved and it allows me to offer ongoing companionship, albeit remotely. The second everyday expression that I'm bringing up is peace and quiet. Ah, oh, those wonderful words, peace and quiet. This has been a challenging few months for everyone, but undoubtedly mothers with small or young children will have struggled more than many. Juggling homeschooling with unwilling victims whilst also trying to entertain toddlers for four hours, let alone four months, is a challenging um, task. So what could we do? Well, maybe some of us might feel called to show God's love 
by offering to take the children for a little while to the park or maybe just to entertain them in their home so that the mum has some time to herself for some restorative peace and quiet. And of course it goes without saying that fathers in the same situation should be offered that same um, respite. Thirdly, how can we contribute to giving someone peace of mind? Perhaps what is needed is for us to be a quiet sounding board so that they can open up about something that weighs heavy on them. It might be illness or financial worries or crippling self-doubt. Very unlikely that we will be able to take the problem away. But airing the worry can provide temporary relief. Furthermore, we could offer to pray with them or we could pray for them and ask God to shoulder their burden so that they can experience a deeper peace of mind. The next example is making one's peace. Sometimes we fall out with one another and when this happens, emotions get churned up. It's so tempting to convince ourselves that we are in the right, nursing our righteous wrath to keep it warm to paraphrase Rabbi Burns' Tam O'Shanter about his wife. The atmosphere becomes charged, then toxic. Relationships become strained and individuals avoid each other, cracks appearing in friendships or in work relationships, the longer this continues. As Christians, we are fortunate because in these situations, we soon hear that little heavenly whisper percolate through our anger, calling us to be the ones to take the first step forward, to be the peacemakers. As Jesus said, blessed are the peacemakers. And how about the phrase, a peace offering? And I'm going to take a little bit of leeway here. But here's an illustration. Sometimes around 8.30 at night, we take our rather scruffy and certainly very elderly poodle out for a final walk to the park. One area in particular seems to attract groups, sometimes quite large, of young men and they are often accompanied by fairly big, rather menacing looking dogs, albeit ones that are usually adorned uh, rather confusingly with glittering diamante collars. What used to happen is that we would pass I would frown nervously, they would glower and scowl, and my nerves would ratchet up. In some ways, both our behaviours felt quite confrontational, even if unintentionally so. Lately, however, I felt strongly encouragement for me to smile and to say hello as I walk past. And what happens now is that they respond with beaming grins showing fantastic teeth and cheery greetings which has transformed our connection. 
Perhaps my initial action wasn't exactly a peace offering, but I do feel that it was a godly prompt for me to take the first peaceful step forward and to live out his love. Finally, I'm choosing the phrase inner peace, not perhaps an everyday expression, but nevertheless, one that we can enjoy through our relationship with our loving father. Sometimes this relationship can feel a little bit like our poor feet, dry and cracked. What we need to remember is that we get the most out of our relationship with God when we invest and take care of it. No creams are needed, just time to talk with him, to enjoy his company and to listen to him. That way we can enjoy the inner peace that comes from knowing his love and which emboldens us to share it with others. Amen. Thank you, Gillian, for that encouraging word. As we seek to put on the armour of God, may we seek God for the peace that surpasses all understanding and the many different aspects and situations in our lives where God can provide us that peace. Please join us now as we sing our next song and reflect on all that we have heard in the next song, which is, It is Well With My Soul. When peace like a river attendeth my way, when so It is 
is well, it is well with my soul. And Lord, haste the day when the faith shall be sighed. The clouds roll back as a scroll. The trumpet shall sound and the Lord shall descend. Even so, it is well with my soul. It is well with my soul. It is well. It is well with my soul Amen such an encouraging hymn yes indeed it is well with our souls in a moment I'll share a blessing but I just want to remind you all that there is prayer ministry and coffee after the service those Zoom details will be up on the screen. Please do go ahead and join as required. May the Lord of peace himself give you peace at all times and in every way. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among us and remain with us always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ, amen. Have a peaceful week. Stay blessed.